Today's video is a little different because it's kind of personal. If you didn't know, my main job is being a musician, and my main instrument is saxophone, which is why I've had this, my little sax raisin guy, for well over 30 years. Now, he's been with me through high school, a few years in the Army, college, moves, marriage, raising kids, and yeah, I've kind of always been a little afraid I'd lose him or break him, and for years, I really wished I could somehow create a backup of him, and that's where the Moose 3D Scanner came in. 3D Maker Pro sent the Moose 3D Scanner over to me and asked me to check it out. And I've had it for a few weeks, going through all the different features. In the box, you're gonna get a scanner, a power adapter, cables, a tripod, and a turntable. The scanner itself is compact, lightweight, and really well built. And just a heads up on the turntable, it didn't come with a power adapter for it. It's micro USB, so you're gonna need to break out one of those USB plugs you have laying around. Power. Fascinating. The included tripod is okay for most of your turntable scans. It's mostly metal with plastic legs that really didn't quite level out, but that ball head at the top, well, it adjusts really well, so it wasn't that big a deal. And the Moose scanner itself has a standard screw connector underneath, and that'll work with pretty much any tripod out there. Now setup is really straightforward. The scanner cable, it just splits off into two parts and one connects to your PC with a data cable and the other side does need external power that comes with it in the box. Then you'll just need to install and set up your JM Studio software that comes from 3D Maker Pro. Now that software is functional, but not the most polished. There's features like AI visual tracking, smart error correction, and auto align. The interface could use a little tweaking to make things easier to understand, but like I said, it's functional. Also, there's no buttons on the scanner itself. Everything is just done through the software. Getting started, I tried scanning using my Surface tablet. Now it met the recommended specs, but scans didn't turn out quite good. After some testing and trial and error, I did find that part of the problem was I was running the power adapter through my computer's USB, not that power adapter, and that would be so easy, but while it powered on, I couldn't get a clean scan until I used that included power supply, but weirdly, even after I did that, I still wasn't getting great scans. Well then, I moved over to my main Windows 11 video editing PC and I immediately saw way better results. Another note that I quickly discovered is those cables are a little shorter than I would like, so make sure your setup isn't too spread out. Well now let's get to the good part, scanning the Sax Raisin guy here. Well, this is where I learned a lot about the scanner and the software. And I think that probably applies to most of us. You know, it's easier to figure out something like this when we're actually using it. Getting started, you're gonna to need to get an initial scan of the turntable, so it's gonna know what to remove later. And when doing this, the software says to press the red button to stop. But when to stop? Oh, and it says initialing, which I assume means initializing, maybe? <laughs> anyway, I tried letting it run a full revolution for some scans, and. Then I just tried letting it run a second or two, and it seemed to work just fine either way. This would definitely be a spot where there should be a timer or an ending frame capture limit or something. Well, moving on, I set my Sax Raisin guy up on the turntable and got ready to scan him using the moose. There's a heat map area on the left, and that's gonna show you where you are and need to be in relation to your object. You're gonna see a slightly larger bump, and you'll wanna keep that somewhere in the middle, and that'll help you get the best scan. Your adjustment options are on the right, and they're pretty straightforward with a fairly detailed information block right next to them. Getting started, I just left everything at default with the scan frames set at the initial 320 frames. Now, I'm not sure, but those seem to correspond to degrees since it really didn't do a full revolution. So I appended another scan with 360, and that was closer, but not quite there. I adjusted the brightness and sensitivity to hopefully give it a different look and set it to 450 frames. Now my goal was to make sure it went well beyond the start point and that actually seemed to work well. And really my guess is that since the turntable isn't directly connected to or controlled by the scanner, well, it just sort of rotates a little bit slower than expected, but you can always stop it after it passes that full rotation if you want. Oh yeah, I also noticed that you'll need to make sure you actually see the model in the center area. 
and I tried multiple times to get a scan based on the top left image before I realized there was nothing in the middle. So uh, I scanned nothing but the turntable. Well, fortunately, you can delete those bad scans and add another one using a pen. And remember, if you use a pen on another scan, well, just like every other scanner, do your best to not move that scanner or the turntable between scans. Although, when I accidentally did that once, it seemed to be pretty forgiving. Should I stay or should I go? When combining scans, auto-align is really robust when you have your scans all in the same orientation. Never actually got it to work when I had a scan on its side and aligning that with an upright scan, which that actually seems par for the course with most scanning softwares out there. For more complex combinations, like using my Sax Raisin guy and having him on different sides of the object, well, Manual Align gives you better control if you take the time to figure it out. The same as everything. There are three colored dots to align on the same spots on both scans, and it gets really difficult to align sometimes if there's a lot of noise from the turntable, but patience and accuracy are key. Processing creates a couple of new files on the side where your scans are, and for turntable scanning, the turntable was automatically removed from the mesh, which was way better than a lot of others I've tried. Manual scanning, well, that's going to require you to manually remove the turntable. Bummer. It was at this point I noticed my Sax Raisin guy has thin arms even after I added some extra scans on the side. Now, I know it's just an issue with him, so went ahead and printed him out just to see what would happen, and yeah, that's not quite what I wanted. So I tried again, and this time I used the easy scan, turning off the turntable, and that's the manual scanning. I definitely got way more frames this time, and it took a lot longer. And of course, that's when I realized I could have just upped the frames on the turntable. So I started over on the turntable, <laughs> and this time I did a few things a little different. I added a side light that I hope would help with details. I ran a couple of scans, switching the sensitivity from low to max between them, and Auto Align actually worked really well on these. Export file types allow you to export an OBJ, STL, PLY mesh, or R-Scan format, and STL is what I ended up using for all of the prints here. Inside the slicer, I chopped a little bit off the bottom of his feet just so he'd stand flat, and I printed him at 0.2 millimeter layer height, added a little bit of supporting, and I even kind of went a little bit extra this time and painted him up and printed in color. And I have to say, well, the result's pretty awesome. He's back. Maybe a little smaller. No, the color isn't quite right, but it's definitely him. I wish there was more definition in the lines of his face, raisin creases, whatever. I could always make some adjustments in Mesh Mixer or something later, but I'm really good with him just like this. I think he looks awesome. Now, I also tested the moose with another piece that you might recognize if you've seen some of my other videos. My Chess King has been in several previous scanning videos, so I just had to see how the moose would handle it here. With the moose, I couldn't get the whole piece in there using the turntable, so I decided this was a good chance to go full manual. It did take a while, but the scan worked great. Processing obviously took a bit longer, but the final result was really clean and detailed. Now for my Chess King, the moose held up just as well, if not better, than some of the other scanners I've tested before, and I've tested quite a few at this point. And some of you may have noticed, so I'm just going to go ahead and point out that I didn't notice until I printed that I have two of the large crosses at the top, and that's most definitely my fault for missing it in the align process. Thought about fixing it, but it's one of a kind and actually kind of looks cool. You know what? As long as you're happy. Thank you. So here's the bottom line. The Moose 3D scanner, well, it has its quirks, mainly in the software, but I think the hardware is pretty solid and it gets the job done. As with anything, if you're patient and willing to learn the workflow, I think you can get some great results. And for me, getting to preserve my Sax Raisin guy after 30 plus years, well, it's not an exact copy, but really cool. And I'm happy with the results, which is really the most important thing. 
If you enjoyed this video and want to see more scanning content, along with 3D printing, check out my other scanner tests featuring this same Chess King and other models. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. And let's all keep having fun 3D printing and 3D scanning so we can learn, create, and amaze.